back for another product overview. Today we're taking a look at another Microsoft Teams Rooms option, the Rally Plus from Logitech. Previously we took a look at the Tap Plus Meetup for a Microsoft Teams Rooms option. In this case we have the Tap set up with the Rally Plus and the Rally Plus refers to a set of devices all kind of bundled up together as an option that you can purchase uh, outside of just the camera can get this PTZ camera by itself, but the Rally Plus includes the Rally itself, each of the front room speakers, your display hub, which you see down below. There is a table hub over on the table, and there are a couple of mic pods that connect to that table hub. We're gonna go over all these individual components, talk about how they're all wired together. If you wanna get deeper into the actual room system demo, please reference the card that is uh, linked to in the upper corner of this video. Check that out for the TAP Plus Meetup video where we dove into the Microsoft Teams room side of it. Today, we're really focusing in on the Rally Plus and getting it all set up. Starting with the front of room setup, we have the Logitech Rally front and center. The Rally is our 4K PTZ camera uh, that has the right sense technology built into it. The Right Sense technology is a suite of features including Right Sight, Right Light, and Right Sound. Right Sight enables an auto framing technology that properly frames the group of people that are in the room. Right Light is a technology that prioritizes faces rather than the environment when it comes to the auto correction of lighting. Finally, Right Sound focuses in on the audio being spoken and minimizes any kind of background noise that might be coming into play. The Rally camera plugs in to the display hub with a USB-C cable. You can see that it starts in a pointing down stance when it is not engaged. Therefore, it is always easy to tell if the camera is currently in use and feeding anywhere because the camera will be pointing up. When it's pointing down, you know that it's not engaged and this is the resting position for the camera. As we take a look at the bottom, there is a rubbery grip all along the bottom here, uh, helping it to stay in one place and not slide around. And we've also got a little screw hole here to attach this to a tripod or to mount it to some other fixture uh, if we need to put it somewhere that's not just sitting flat on the surface. At the back here, this is where we will be connecting our USB-C in um, and uh, to the display hub. And then we've got the MIDI uh, port right here at the bottom as well. Uh, Kensington lock over to the side. And mentioned earlier that this could be connected to Bluetooth, which it can. You simply use the uh, remote control itself and you will hold the Bluetooth down just for a few seconds and then you will see this device as something you can connect to for your phone maybe uh, and you can connect the device to the Rally so that you can take calls and whatnot through the Rally Plus system. At the front of the room there is also a set of two speakers, a left speaker and a right speaker. Each of these speakers allows for true enterprise grade audio to be broadcast at the front of the room, uh, plugging into the display hub also at the front of the room. The Rally Plus system approaches cable management with a rather unique setup. There is a display hub that sits at the front of the room as well as a table hub that we'll get to in a minute. These hubs allow us to plug all the different components in and connect them together via ethernet, uh, which we'll go over that setup in just a moment. Here is the display hub itself. When Logitech ships the Rally Plus, you will see that they properly display uh, a, a sticker that I have not yet removed on each of these devices so that you're not confused with which one is the display hub and which one is the table hub, although the ports in the back are pretty telling when it comes to that. The cables as well are also marked with different, uh, different labels so that you know which one should go where, which power cord belongs to the display hub versus the table hub, etc. Let's flip this thing around and take a look at all of our cables in the back. 
Taking a look at the back of the display hub, and as you can see, once again, it is properly displayed as to which hub it is. Starting on the left, we've got our front of room speakers plugged in on the left and right. Uh, they are labeled appropriately. We've got our power so that the whole thing turns on and brings power to it. Then we've got this ethernet cable here. And what you'll notice about this, if we look at this side, you'll notice a little X up top. It's telling us, hey, do not plug this cable into the wall for your internet connection. That is not what it's for. Instead, it is meant to connect your display hub to your table hub. And we'll see where it connects to the table hub over on the uh, table hub itself. Then we've got two different HDMI ports. Now, one thing I do want to call out about each of these ports is that as a whole, the display hub can support up to 1080p when you have dual displays set up. The first port being at 60 frames per second and the six, uh, second port being at 30 frames per second. You do need to, per Logitech support article, go in and actually set these settings on the devices themselves, go in through Windows, go to Advanced Setup. I'll provide the link here on the video so that you know where to go and set it to 1080p. Unfortunately, I had difficulties in actually getting my monitor set up right and working properly through the display hub. Uh, so I don't have them plugged in here via HDMI. I have them plugged in on the Nook itself. And we'll take a look at where that's at. It is supported to have dual display plugged in through these HDMI ports. But again, uh, it needs to be 1080p at certain settings uh, max for each of them to work properly. And I just didn't get the right connections into place for this video. Next up, we've got this USB cable that connects over to the Nook via USB, letting the Nook know about all the devices that are connected through here. And finally, this is our USB-C port that is connected to the Rally up top. This device as a whole is supposed to sit at the front of the room. And whether you have that tucked inside of a cabinet somewhere, mounted underneath of a table, uh, wherever you need it to be, the idea here is that this is your cable management system. It allows you to keep cables tucked away and going to a device that is not necessary to be displayed on a surface anywhere within the room. For my purposes, I just kind of have it sitting out on top of this flat surface here, but you can imagine how you would hide this away in an actual enterprise setup. Shifting gears a bit, we've got the table hub sitting on the table itself. As you can see, it is marked table hub. Now this is what the device looks like with all the components plugged in in this particular setup. Um, it's not that intrusive, but if you don't want this displayed on top of your conference table, again, mount it underneath the table, hide it away, uh, whatever you need. That up there at the top of the video is Ben. He is a good old dog. Hey, Ben. Yeah, he's, he's probably not even hearing me. That's okay. Let's take a look at the cabling on the back of this thing. At the back of our table hub, as you can see, it also says table hub and has far fewer ports than the display hub had itself. Um, you can set the Rally Plus up in a couple different configurations. The Rally Plus comes with a really handy cardboardish like insert uh, that shows you a couple different configurations, including the recommended one. I have it set up in the recommended uh, setup right now, and I'm not going to go over the alternate setup. But you can see that we do indeed have two HDMI ports over here as well. We've got the USB connection that would go back to the uh, to the Nook, and then we've got this is the Ethernet cable that is plugged in from the display hub to the table hub. This is our uh, pods, our, our microphone pods that are wired and sitting on top of the conference room table. And then lastly, the power. So as you can see by this setup, this is powered on. It is pretty much here to, in this particular setup to facilitate the microphone pods on the table themselves. But in this configuration, the table hub isn't really supporting any other devices or setups aside from making sure that our microphone pods are connected in to the nook up at the front of the room and we have all our cables hidden away. The Ethernet cable that comes with the Rally Plus to go between the table hub and the display hub is quite long. I'll put the stats up on the screen so uh, we have the official number there, but it allows you to 
uh, very nicely hide the cables away between the two devices so that your front of room setup uh, doesn't have cables showing connecting to the conference room itself. Taking a look at our tabletop for the room, you can see that we've got our pods, our mic pods, they are wired. Uh, you have the wire over on the left hand side here that is going off the table and that is where it actually connects into the table hub sitting right back there. Again, that table hood could be table hub could be connected away somewhere uh, out of sight so that you're not having to look at that on a table. There is a wire between the first pod and the second pod uh, and then no wire at the end. Now, obviously in a conference room, you'll probably want to have uh, those holes at the centers of the table where you can bring wires up through and that way you can have your mics sitting up on top of the table without a ton of wire showing. I was pretty sure my wife would not appreciate me drilling holes into our dining room table to demonstrate this. So we're looking at cables for now. Then you've got the Logitech taps sitting at the center of it all. Uh, on the one side, we have our USB coming out with the USB strong cable that Logitech ships. It is a very long cable. Again, I'll include the link here. That is going back to our nook. And then you've also got the power cable coming out of there to power the tap itself. On the other side, we've got a HDMI cable that comes out. This is for HDMI input for walking into the room with a laptop, plugging HDMI into your laptop, and displaying your screen to the meeting or the front of room display or both. Right in the center of the HDMI cable, you've got the remote control for the rally. Let's take a look at that, shall we? There we are, the remote for the Logitech rally. This is very similar to the remote for the meetup. Uh, if you, again, I'll include the, uh, the card up in the upper corner here if you wanna go and look at my video on the tap and meetup setup. Uh, we've got our zoom in and zoom out. This is the multi-directional panning capability here so that we can not just look left, right, up and down, but we can also turn the camera to different angles as well. This center button rehomes the camera back to its center focused uh, display. You've got a couple different presets that you can configure here as well, as far as where the camera should be pointed and how zoomed in it should be, etc. Uh, you can control the volume up and down right here as well. We can mute the, the, uh, the, the Rally Plus as well. Clicking that will mute our two mic pods over there, turning them red up top. We have Bluetooth connecting capabilities and then answer and hang up for calls as well. All right, here we are looking at the compute portion of the room system, an Intel Nook. We are looking kind of at the front of the device here, and you'll notice that I've got a USB to HDMI converter here. This is because of what I mentioned earlier, where I wasn't able to personally get the dual display working from the display hub. I just didn't put the time into it. So I ended up picking up a, a fairly cheap converter here so that I can plug my uh, first HDMI display into the back. And the second one is coming in through USB uh, with this converter right here. This is the HDMI cable for the first display plugged in back here. And then again, we've got an HDMI to USB plugged in at the front. To demo the meeting join experience and using the Logitech Rally with the Rally Plus equipment, we have set up a Rally Plus demo meeting. You can see we've got our handy dandy join button that pops right up on the tap as usual. Let's go ahead and tap that join button. See what I did there? See that? And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and watch ourselves join the meeting up front and see the rally spring into action. As I click join, we jump into our meeting. The rally comes to life and points right at me. Hi. And now we wait to be admitted to the, via the lobby. Now I'll join this meeting and we'll go ahead and admit the rally system into, uh, into the system. And we have tapped the mute on both our Microsoft Teams client, as well as on the mic pods themselves. So now they are glowing red. As you can see, they're glowing red. Now we're off mute, back on mute. Okay, so we are in a Microsoft Teams meeting that nobody else has joined yet. On the Logitech tab, 
using the Rally Plus system. What we're going to do here is take a look at how we can take advantage of the dual display in this case. You see that our video is on the one screen, which is where we'll see video of other participants when they join, but our secondary screen has nothing on it at this point. I've got my laptop here with me, and I've got some cool information about the Rally Plus that I want to share in the meeting. So what we're going to do here is take the HDMI cable that comes out of the tap itself, plug that into our display or into our laptop so that we can make use of that other screen and share this information, both within the room and for others that join the meeting after the fact. We plug it in and boom, there we go. On the other screen, we've got all the information up there for our Rally Plus. You can see all the components, the modular mic pods, the speakers for the front of the room, the Rally Plus, the remote control, and there we go. We're in a Microsoft Teams meeting. We've got the Rally Plus giving great clear video. I have even used the remote control to zoom on in to just myself and my camera here. Uh, it's why I can customize where the camera is looking for these meetings and we're sharing content via the tap. So on the Logitech support site for the rally, there are a couple downloads that we want to pay attention to here. Um, we have, as we go down the page a bit, we've selected Windows 10. Uh, there is the Logitech Sync application, which allows you to kind of manage firmware updates across the uh, across multiple devices in your environment. So uh, as you see here, Sync Portal allows for remote device room monitoring, scheduled firmware updates, and more. So really important components to, uh, to keep, um, at least on a system where we can manage firmware updates and keep our Rally Plus systems up to date. Taking a look at the camera settings for the Rally, this is an app that allows you to manage your presets, uh, set different things having to do with the device itself. We uh, had a previous video, I'll include the card up in the corner uh, for managing the Logitech Brio from a similar app, and that's what we're gonna do here. Let's jump over to that app and take a look at managing the Rally settings. Okay, here we are. We're taking a look at the Logitech Rally camera settings app. If you have seen the previous video I did covering the Logitech Brio, this will look like the exact same app pretty much. Uh, as you'll notice, we've got our home up top and our advanced over on the right. On the home screen, you can either choose from a standard image or a widescreen image. Switching over to widescreen, we get a little bit wider angle here. Um, looking at the anti-flicker, you same thing, 60 hertz, 50 hertz. Uh, and then you can restore defaults if you need to. We will uh, then take a look at our on-screen settings here. So we've got left, right, shift back over, up, and then down. And of course, this will recenter us back, uh, back in the middle. Now, when you first open this app up, it won't do anything unless there is actually a camera plugged in. It detected the Logitech Rally is being plugged in, and so it opened up the app, and here we are with the camera. We can see a view of the camera and what it looks like. If we go over to the advanced settings, you'll see that we've got our brightness, contrast, color intensity, auto white balance. Uh, we can turn down to auto here, and then auto focus. So if you turn off the autofocus and you start sliding this down, you'll notice we become out of focus rather quickly. So I tend to like to leave it clicked on autofocus when it's, when it's on, you can't slide this far around and the camera does the focusing by itself. Uh, so that's these settings. Again, we can restore the defaults if we need to change any of them. And going back over to, actually, if we just scroll down a little bit here and click on the Logitech rally camera question or not I guess exclamation mark there you get to see a little bit more information about the device here uh, we get to see the build for the application um, now that we've kind of taken a look at that I want to cover setting presets on the camera so again we've got our bring this up to the camera we've got our remote here and we've got our two presets at the bottom we've got one and two down here so in order to set a preset on the camera we need to actually get the camera into the position we want. So I'm gonna actually zoom in a bit here and I'm going to say that, um, scroll out a little bit. 
All right, I'm gonna say this is right where we want the camera to start. This will be preset one. So I'm gonna show that when we actually do preset one, you hold the preset one down once the camera is where you want it to be and you hold it down for about three seconds and we actually see the blinking of the camera right down here at the bottom of the camera itself. That shows that we've set a preset. Now we'll go ahead and return our camera angle back to the starting point and we're gonna move it a little bit over to the left. And we want it to start in this position next time. This will be our, our preset two. So again, we hold down preset two for about three seconds. We see our, our blinking on the bottom of the camera and now we've got presets one and two. So if I click on one, there we go. The camera goes back to preset one. If I click on two, we're back to preset two. That's setting your presets. Of course, we can use the uh, remote control to uh, go all around, move the camera every which angle we need to, all the way up, move it around, bring it down. And if we click that middle home button, it'll bring it right back to the starting point. That is using the remote control, setting the camera settings, and setting your presets. Thanks for tuning in and checking out the Logitech Rally Plus. My cat has decided to join me to close out this video and say thank you. Hopefully the video helped you understand the context in which to use the system, how to set it up, how to deploy it, how to manage it in your environment. Please subscribe to the channel below if you have not already. I would appreciate it greatly if you splashed it around here on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, any other social media channel that you hang out on. And I hope we'll see you here for the next product overview and demo video. Thanks.